Hi, welcome back to the third part of today's lecture. Now, as promised, I, we can give a procedure to find the inverse of any n by matrix. Now, we, so far, we have actually a, a formula for the two by two case. But the one thing I wanna caution to you or give you a warning about before we start is that there are matrices where you may not be able to find the inverse. And I'll explain what you'll notice when you can't find the inverse. For example, in the two by two case, no um, inverse if the AD minus the CB, which is the determinant, is equal to zero. So in order to kind of show you the procedure, I thought it would be best to give you an illustration of how the procedure works. But I've, I've written down the three main steps of the procedure. Say you're given some sort of matrix. In this case, it's a three by three matrix. What you first do is you take your matrix A and you throw in an appropriately sized identity matrix. So in my case here, I'm going to start with my matrix A, one, zero, minus two, negative three, one, four, two, minus three, and four. And I can put a dashed line here. I don't really need that there. But beside it, I'm going to put an identity matrix. So I end up getting starting with a three by three matrix and then end up with a three by six matrix. So that's my initial starting point. If this had been a 10 by 10 matrix, I would have had the identity matrix of size 10. Now, what we're going to do is apply results way back from the first and second lectures, which, uh, me, which were the row operations of A to make the identity matrix. So we're just going to try to do the row operations and turn the side into the identity matrix. The th key thing, though, is when we do these operations to this side, we're going to do it to the entire matrix. So we're going to be changing what's happening down here. And when we make this side the identity matrix, there's going to be some numbers over here. And whatever those numbers are, this part over here will actually form the inverse. So I'm sorry, that got kind of cut off. So B is the inverse. So let me illustrate this. So this is the matrix A with the identity joined on. And let's do some row operations. So I'm going to kill everything down the first column. Use, use the usual Gaussian elimination. So I'm not touching the first row. I multiply the first row by three and add it to the second row. So I get zero, um, zero one minus six plus four is minus two, three plus zero, zero, one, zero. Now I'm gonna multiply the top row by minus two. So I'll get a zero there. I'll get a minus three here. I'll get a four there. So four plus four is eight. Uh, minus two plus zero there and zero one. Okay, and now we continue this process. So th this example is nice enough already that I already have a one in that spot. So I can use that to kill the element below it. And so I have one zero minus two, one zero zero. 0, 1, minus 2, 3, 1, 0. And then I'm going to multiply this row by 3 and add it to this row. So I'll get 0 minus 6 plus 8 is 2. Uh, then I will get uh, 3. Uh, 3 times 3 is 9 plus 2 is 7. Then I'll get uh, 3 plus 3, 1. Okay, you may have to check all these calculations yourself later. And now Normally we would turn this into a one, but remember our goal is to turn this into the identity matrix. So I'm gonna be a little bit smart and not rescale anything. I'll just notice, hey, if I add this row to this row, I make that a zero. And if I add this row to the top row, I get a zero there, which is exactly what I want. So here I would have zero, zero, two, seven, three, one. Then I have zero, one. So I'm adding the bottom row to the second row, zero, 10, 4, 1. Then I'll take the bottom row and add it to the top row. 1, 0, 0, uh, 8, 3, 1. And let's scroll down. So we're almost there. This almost looks like the identity matrix. The problem is I have a 2 here, and normally it should be a 1. So I will rescale, th rescale that. And I end up with 1, 0, 0. 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. There's my identity matrix. On the other side, I have 8, 3, 1, 10, 4, 1, 7 halves, 3 halves, and 
one half. And so let's scroll this a bit more there. And so right here, we're getting a matrix. And this matrix here turns out to be the inverse of A, almost by magic. Now, actually, in the next lecture, we'll show that it's not magic. We'll actually explain why this would happen. But remember, uh, for now, let's just believe that the procedure worked. And maybe you don't believe me entirely that I did everything correctly, but that's okay because now you can check your answer, right? Because as I said, is whenever you have, find an inverse, you can check your answer because what I want to do is take one, zero, minus two, minus three, one, four, two, minus three, four, and then multiply it by the matrix that I get. And if you want, you may want to pause right here and then try to calculate this and check to see that you do get the answer of the identity matrix. Okay, I know I'm just quickly writing it down. I'm not actually doing the computation, but it, but it is right. Now, as you might expect, this is something that you should be able to do in uh, Octave or MATLAB. And I've already, uh, I'll show you how to do that. Here is the exact same matrix that we've computed the inverse. So I'm just inputting it into my into Octave. And I say I want to find the inverse. Well, here's the command, INV of A. And there we go. That's the answer. So we're getting 8, 3, 1, 10, 4, 1, 3, 3 halves, 4, 1 half, and a half. And if we go back over to what we had, this is three halves, that's one half, uh, 1.5, and this is a half. So we are actually getting the right answer. Uh, just in case you're not following the video and just looking at the note, you'll need to know what the octave command is. So it's just inverse A. And let me just show you something. We'll go back to the two by two example that we looked at the beginning. If we, if we try the matrix A, that we started out with, which was one, two, four, seven, and we apply this procedure, one, two, four, seven, uh, to this particular matrix. We set up the identity matrix, and now we do our row reduction. So basically you're doing Gaussian reduction, and you're trying to put it into reduced row echelon form. So we end up with one, two, one, zero. Okay, I'm just skipping through the steps, but as I said before, you could pause and try to figure out all of these steps by yourself. But I'll just put in enough pointers here so that you can see uh, what I'm doing. Oops, that should have been a, nine, a one. And then this is similar to, I'll put that down here on a line a little further. This is equal to one, zero, one. There's the identity. And over here we have minus seven, two, four, minus one. And this guy right here is my inverse. This is a inverse of my matrix. So we have our formula. We also have our procedure. And let, let's just go back a page or two and double check that we actually have the same answer as before. Okay, we had negative seven, two, four, negative one. So let's go to the end and there we go. That's the exact same answer as before. Okay, well, going back a little bit to my warning here. Okay, I said that sometimes the inverse may not exist. Okay, and when does that sort of thing happen? Well, let me just tell you when that might happen. So as an example, If you get a row of zeros on the left-hand side, that's when you have no inverse. Okay, and I actually have an example here where you can see this phenomenon happening. So I could have started with one, zero, one, zero, one, one, and four, two, six, and I start with my procedure. And again, you may want to pause and try to calculate this yourself, but here is the row op first row operations. We try to make zeros in the first column. 
And let's see, we have, so, sorry, I'm just talking to myself as I'm writing all of this down. And now I'm gonna do one more row operation. And you'll notice that when I come to do this row operation, I'm gonna use this one to kill the two, right? So the top row, nothing happened. In the second row, I leave it at the same. Now I'm multiplying the second row by minus two. And then when I do that, I get a minus two plus two, which is a zero, and a minus two plus two, which is a zero. And then I will still have a minus four, minus two, and one. And because I have, I'm looking at the left-hand side, and I have all zeros here, I have no inverse, okay? No inverse exists. So this is a quick overview of how one finds the inverse of a matrix for any n by n matrix and how to determine whether you do not have an inverse, basically when you get a row of zeros, as in this particular example. In the last part of today's lecture, we'll link some ideas about what does an inverse and a system of linear equations do together.